To some people, 5G might seem like little more than a way to get faster mobile broadband speeds. But multiple use cases are now developing, particularly as the latest radio access and core technologies are paired with capabilities such as AI to provide innovative opportunities in industry verticals. To talk about the potential of 5G, I'm here today with Enrico Salvatore, Senior Vice President and President of Qualcomm Europe MEA. So Enrico, can you just give us an update on the current status of 5G adoption globally and in Europe? Hello, and thank you for hanging here. 5G deployment uh, is marching very fast. We have uh, more than 160 uh, operators, carriers around the world in commercial service with 5G and uh, 75 out of the 160 are uh, from Europe. So Europe in particular is uh, more than 45% of the commercial launches. Of course, we have uh, even more uh, uh, operators uh, worldwide and other 20 270 uh, carriers are working on uh, uh, the 5G commercial launch. Uh, status. Status is uh, definitely marching as uh, expected, actually, even more because we see the full uh, 5G deployment. Uh, when I say full, I mean uh, across all the frequency band needed to achieve uh, uh, the 5G. So in the 700 megahertz, in the sub 6, uh, 3.5 gigahertz in the millimeter wave around the world. Different uh, continent by continent, but uh, overall marching very fast. Devices are available. Devices not only in terms of the smartphone, but in terms of PC, in terms of FWA, CPE, uh, IoT modules. You will see cars with the 5G connectivity uh, soon. So uh, devices more and more adopting the 5G technology. and. Uh, uh, collaboration with the operators to continue uh, developing uh, coverage. That is definitely where we are marching at the moment, but there is uh, still uh, a lot to do in terms of roadmap, uh, developing the uh, more coverage, the millimeter wave, uh, ORAN technology, uh, release 16, release 17. So a full uh, roadmap ahead, but uh, a lot of uh, work already done starting in 2019. Uh, up to today in 2021. And can you talk about the powerful combination of 5G and AI? Yeah, the 5G is uh, definitely a precondition in terms of uh, connectivity, creating the infrastructure to uh, achieve uh, a connectivity for the objects. That has been the main driver in designing uh, the 5G network. Uh, with the connectivity of all the objects, of course, 5G will provide also additional performance and connectivity for the human beings. But uh, I think the core of the 5G technology has been created uh, focusing on objects. Uh, with the connectivity infrastructure in place, the next step is to provide the level of intelligence to the objects so that they can do uh, decision uh, autonomously uh, with the power they have uh, uh, integrated in, uh, in addition to the connectivity. So this is the AI. And uh, definitely the AI in, implies uh, the machine learning, computer vision, uh, feature set and technology that are uh, fully embedded, enabling the edge computing. So making sure that the devices can, the objects, can uh, uh, make autonomous decision in real time, introducing services application that are uh, being not uh, available possible in terms of technology uh, with the previous generation of connectivity and without uh, the AI combination in the objects. Now let's look at a specific industry vertical. Uh, what does 5G mean for the automotive sector? Well the 5G, uh, this is a very good question because uh, 5G is a uh, actually we consider as a bridge to uh, uh, work with the industry sectors, inter segments that were not be part of the telco or ecosystem uh, with the previous generation. So the verticals are uh, many. Uh, you mentioned automotive, that is definitely one of the most mature in, in adopting the 5G, but there is of course also the IoT, 
the energy sectors. But uh, b back to the uh, automotive. O automotive is, uh, first of all, uh, taking a benefit uh, leveraging on the connectivity in order to enable uh, cellular V2X, what is named a vehicle to whatever. So car to car connectivity, car to pedestrian, car to motorcycle, car to the network, car to the cloud. So uh, uh, really making the car one element of the network with the ability to connect and interoperate with all the other uh, objects, human beings that are connected to the network. This is uh, the connectivity element. Then there is the AI element. So the ability for the car to make uh, autonomously decision. So ADAS technology and autonomous driving as a service and application. And that is uh, AI combined with 5G is making really the revolution in the uh, car uh, combined in particular with the electrification of the car. So there is a major discontinuity in, uh, in the automotive because of electrification from one side and more and more digitalization of the car combining the traditional telematics connectivity, the technology for infotainment and cockpit with the uh, ADAS autonomous driving. So introducing the concept that uh, we used to call uh, digital chassis. Okay, that, that's really interesting. Can you just explain a little bit more about what you mean by the, the digital chassis? Digital chassis is a concept that is combining all the electronics uh, in the car and the functions that are, uh, again, from the connectivity telematics, uh, combining with the uh, cellular V2X, so the safety that will be in, uh, bring by CV2X into the cars and uh, the uh, electronics for the cockpit and uh, for the infotainment, plus the uh, autonomous driving, so the implementation of uh, level one, level two, level three, level four, of all the uh, uh, different levels to achieve uh, uh, autonomous driving. The, the digital chassis will be, from our perspective, an element of differentiation in the uh, car uh, uh, roadmap and uh, evolution uh, with the electrification, so with the uh, electric vehicles, uh, with the chassis, and with all the electronics that will uh, enable the car to be part of the network accessing to the cloud services, but also uh, with the uh, ability, thanks to the AI, to connect all the sensors, all the data collected by the sensor around the car, and to have uh, autonomous and real-time decision process in the car. This is already happening, by the way. We are not talking about the future of the cars. We are talking about what is already, with the, in particular, level one, level two, level two plus, available in, in a in commercial market. But the trend is to combine more and more those feature sets. In particular, we can also consider what is happening with the software upgrades uh, that is enabling not only function of the car for maintenance, but also in terms of a new service and application, cloud service in particular, the ability to do entertainment in the car using personal assistant as we do at home already embedded in, in our uh, chipset, in our uh, hardware and software platform that we deliver to the market. So the digital chassis is uh, the uh, evolution of uh, uh, one uh, main element that will uh, uh, deliver differentiation for the uh, new cars with the electrification. Yeah, it's a really fascinating development. Um, so what is Qualcomm's R&D contribution to the sector? Uh, and what does this mean for the ongoing development of 5G and subsequent rollouts? Well, Qualcomm, we are focused on uh, uh, innovation, uh, technology, uh, delivering technology. Our DNA is uh, focused 100% on uh, innovative ideas, innovative technologies that is uh, bringing <clears throat> the engine, or let's say enabling new products, new service and new application. Uh, in terms of the 5G, we started uh, from uh, the participation of uh, a standardization group, 3GPP, so more than 10 years ago, 
contributing with other industry players in uh, creating the standard. Uh, we strongly believe uh, that uh, is uh, important for a global uh, market economy of scale to have uh, a single open standard. That's why we invest and we invest it. Uh, 3G, 4G, 5G, different generation. Uh, if you go back to Qualcomm in the past 30 years, we invested more than 70 billion US dollar in, in R&D. And uh, this innovation uh, in terms of technology is then um, maturing as uh, products. And uh, first of all, we Qualcomm make available hardware and software platform, what we call the chipset, that is uh, uh, enabling our uh, partner, customer working on device products. So the smartphone, the PC, tablet, FWA, uh, CPE, cars, uh, IoT modules for connectivity, many, many more products. And uh, all of that is uh, uh, moving also on the deployment by the operators. So we collaborate with the operators for uh, technology trials, introducing new performance, uh, uh, deployment of the network. Of course, our contribution is on the UE, on the device side, where we make available our engineering to fine tune uh, uh, the, the network performance in collaboration with the device. We work uh, uh, with the infrastructure vendors. We collaborate with them, making sure that the interoperability testing of the devices that will be equipped with the Qualcomm uh, platform will operate according to the standards, according to the performance expected uh, uh, as per the 3GPP. So that, that is uh, the, the contribution in terms of the evolution of 5G roadmap. Of course, uh, we are now focusing on uh, making available more and more uh, devices, or let's say enabling devices and service application that uh, will leverage all on the uh, leveraging on the millimeter wave. I think uh, this is a, a, an important element of the 5G deployment. Uh, it's important to continue working to the coverage and we see also the uh, ORAN uh, open radio access network uh, as an element uh, to contribute uh, to the deployment uh, for the uh, 5G coverage. And uh, of course, uh, continue working on, uh, on the standardization, release 16, release 17 products are coming uh, and uh, Qualcomm is working on the technology side to make our products uh, uh, fully aligned and compliant with the, the standards. So a lot of work uh, done, but even more exciting work to come. Well, really fascinating developments. It really is an exciting industry we're in today. Enrico, thanks very much for joining us today and giving us an update on what Qualcomm is doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.